What's going on everybody? This is Scruffy Pam, Lord of Socks, coming at you with a little bit different type of video this time around. Earlier today, I installed this Apex Badlands 12,000 pound winch on my Fab 4's bumper on my 2021 Jeep Wrangler. And I have video of the process. Hope you enjoy the following video. Thank y'all for being here. See you soon. All right, viewers, so this is the Badland Apex 12,000 pound synthetic rope winch that we'll be installing on Chief today. Uh, purchased this at Harbor Freight. Actually got a good deal on it. They've got uh, this program where you can sign up to be some sort of VIP or something like that. And uh, so I signed up and I was able to save significantly on this um, because of that. So let's go ahead and, and open this bad boy up, see what's in it. I've already cut the tape. Let's go ahead and take the top off. See what's in the box, right? Unboxing. Oh, this is pretty cool. So a guide to winching. I guess it tells you, tells you all about how to winch. I'll, I'm going to toss this over here for later viewing. <clears throat> and then we got the uh, owner's manual and safety instructions. So I'm going to toss this over here to the side as well for installation purposes. And then a bunch of stickers. Wow. Two, four, six, eight, nine stickers. Dang. They want to make sure that uh, they get their name out there. So what I understand, again, this is, a, this is an amazing winch. So we'll see. I'm going to toss this out of the way as well. Let's take a look at what we have here. All right, so we have the fair lead plate. Uh, it's got the the remote. This has got a wireless remote. So here's the here's the wireless remote. It's even got a little plastic weatherproof cover on it, so uh, you don't get mud and water inside it. Uh, you, two different modes: wired mode and wireless mode on it. We got our hook. This thing is solid, y'all. Very heavy. And then uh, this appears to be the remote, the cable to operate the winch from the remote if you want to operate it wire, wired. All right, let's go ahead and pull this part out. And here's the winch. Now, let me tell you, I had no clue how heavy these things are. This joker is heavy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the camera off. We'll, uh, well, let me, let me show you. Show you this. I do have my winch plate off of the Fab Force bumper right here. Uh, we'll be installing it on the bumper as well. And then we'll be putting the winch on top of that. So let me go ahead and get the Jeep set up on the lift. Get everything un totally unboxed. And then we'll get over there and uh, look at some more of the things that were inside the box. And I'll be right back. All right, let's take a look at what was in the box. Of course, here's the, the winch itself. Um, again, this thing is heavy. Then we had uh, these three cables, which I think is for remote mounting of the, uh, I think this is the control assembly. Okay, so these three wires, um, or if you want to remote mount this away from the winch. I won't be doing that, so I won't be using uh, these, these cables here. At least not right now, I'm not. Then we got the, uh, the power disconnect. It will wire uh, between the battery and the positive side of the winch. Over here, we got the, uh, the positive cable goes to the winch. Also, ground wire, the, the ground wire that's going to run from the battery to the winch. Mounting hardware and some other hardware items that I am not familiar with at this point. All right, and that's uh, that's pretty much what was in the box. And I think, I could be wrong, this looks like a, a remote mounting plate, again, for the control assembly. Won't be using that, so I'm going to toss that over to the side. Uh, with the Fairly, they give you, um, along with the, the mounting bolts for the winch, they give you these really nice, uh, look like, anyways, polished steel or something. 
bolts and nuts that you use to mount the fair lead to uh, the mounting plate. It's pretty pretty sweet looking. And so we're gonna put a put a big washer in each of these bolts. Uh, thread this through the mounting plate holes. Actually, I'm gonna find the correct socket. I do have a toolbox right here behind us. Eight millimeter Allen head. Thread this through here. This is a nice tight fit here, actually. Well, with the uh, the Fab Four's mounting plate. So the mounting plate did not come with a winch. This is a Fab Four's uh, mounting plate that came with the bumper itself. All right, I'm gonna find the wrench size I need. Looks like it's probably a 20 millimeter. And it is. So one thing we always preach to our students uh, here in our automotive technology program is torquing items. You know, if there's a torque spec, it needs to be torqued um, to the proper specification. And actually I noticed in the manual that there is a torque spec for the Fairlead bolt. All right, and I've got my trusty Mac Tools torque wrench here, 3 8 drive. Uh, the torque spec for this is going to be 53 to 57 foot pounds. So I'm going to split that right in the middle and let's tighten it, tighten it to 55 foot pounds. How about that? Get this thing turned over to 55. My old eyes are having a hard time seeing these numbers. All right, 55 foot-pounds is now set. There we go. Torque this one. All right. Always, after you're through with the torque wrench, make sure you turn it back down to the lowest setting. If it's a uh, click type torque wrench, it saves the calibration. All right, so now we have our fair lead mounted to the um, mounting plate. I'm gonna go ahead and carry all this over to the Jeep. So there's this old saying that I've heard for years and I tend to I tend to live by it and work by it that says Some of y'all may have heard it or not work smarter Not harder So one thing on that I've noticed from a couple of the videos I watched is it's really hard to line up the bolt holes with a bumper with the mounting bracket or the mounting plate excuse me with a bumper with a mounting plate and then you know get it through here so what I did is I got a couple bolts or four bolts and actually cut the heads off of them making them studs so now I have something that I can automatically line up all those holes with I don't have to worry about the nuts falling out of these uh, these slots so the the nuts that mount the winch are not threaded into the winch itself. They're actually uh, just nuts that are that were loose in this bag, and you stick in these slots here. So while you're setting the winch down, there's a, po there's a potential for those to slide out, and I could just see this becoming a, a real nightmare. So I said, hey, why not work smarter, not harder, make some studs, and now all I have to do is carry the winch over, drop the winch through the holes. Theoretically, Everything should line up, unscrew the studs, stick the bolts in, and we should be all set. So let's see how this works out. All right, I'm gonna go grab that winch and carry it over here and let's see if my theory proves true. Drop it right over. Hopefully, hopefully everything lines up like I think it will. Okay. Okay. There we go. 
It is in there, people. I am a genius. I'm a genius. All right, so now I'm gonna raise it on up and we'll go ahead and secure it from the bottom side. So I did my best to line this up for you so you could see exactly what's going on. These two silver marks. So uh, this is one of the studs that I created right here. The next one is right up here. So all I have to do now is unscrew those and then screw the bolts up and go ahead and fasten everything down and we'll be set as far as mounting the, uh, the winch. So I'm going to go ahead and get those tightened up really quick like. Hopefully, in theory, this works just as easily as I thought it would. So far, so far it is. But you know what? This, um, these bolts, they don't reach far enough. I uh, definitely don't want to put them on without washers. Uh, but with the washers and the mounting plate the Fab 4s gave me, as well as the thickness of the bumper, these bolts aren't long enough, so I'm going to go get some longer bolts. All right, and I did find some longer bolts. They are the same strength bolts as the other one. That's important also because there's going to be a lot of tension on these things whenever you start using the winch, start operating it. So I found some bolts that are the right size, diameter, um, that are long enough but not too long where it's going to damage the housing of the winch of course so now we're just going to go through the process of removing these studs and installing the new longer bolts you know what i probably should have checked the head size of those before I got this far, but you know what? It's too late. We'll uh, do it this way. They're either 17s or 18s, I do believe. And I nailed it the first time. They are 17 millimeters. Go ahead and run these up, and then I'll, I'll look and see what the proper torque is. We'll see about getting a torque wrench stuck up in here. And get these things torqued down to the proper torque again so we don't have any issues out on the trail don't want a winch moving around on you i don't think i wouldn't think that'd be a good idea anyways i'm sure my arm's all in the way and i apologize for that but you know you do what you gotta do there we go. All right, let's see what the torque is on these bad boys. These bad boys. Winch mounting fasteners, 33 foot-pounds. So actually, the uh, winch is a lesser torque than the uh, fair lead. That's pretty crazy. And the range is 30 to 33. I'm just going to stick with 33. This should be 33 all day long. Now the fun part is getting up in uh, it almost hit my head. Well, that was not, that would not have been good. Watch out there, Scruffy. Oh, good gracious, there we go. All righty. Whew. Turn the torque wrench back down to the minimum. And then we're done on the bottom side. All right, so we got the, um, Fair lead on there, got the mounting plate bolted down, got the winch uh, torqued in place. Looks pretty freaking awesome. I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so the next step is figuring out how we're gonna route the wires. I kind of had the thought of potentially routing it through the grill. Don't think that's going to work, so I think we're going to have to go, you know, I said I was done underneath the vehicle, but I don't think we are. I um, think I am going to have to run it underneath the vehicle and up. Another thing that I just realized that I did is I mounted the winch uh, without putting the 
without mounting the ground wire right here. Um, I mean, that's all good, but it's going to be a little tight for me to get in there and um, put the uh, put the ground wire that comes with a winch on there. But that'll be the next thing that I do. I'm going to go ahead for now and drop this positive cable in this uh, area between the winch and the bumper. All righty, so we got that done. Um, like I said, it's going to be a tight fit to get in here. There's actually uh, a ground wire. Let's see if I can get the camera over here where you guys can kind of see where I'm talking about. Possibly, maybe. So back in behind here is where the ground cable for the winch is going to go. I should have hooked the ground up first. Um, didn't realize that. No big deal. So I'm going to go get the ground wire, figure out what size socket that is, and we'll attach the ground wire and then raise it back up um, or maybe pop the hood, figure out how we're going to route the wires, and then we'll go from there. Actually, I'm just going to leave the video rolling. Um, let's go ahead and pop the hood. And I'm just going to fold the hood all the way over. And let it rest against the windshield. The windshield header anyways. And now I can see um, where I can mount everything. I'm really excited though. The battery actually has a spot where I can hook the winch already. That's pretty freaking cool. Uh, on the positive and the negative side, so that's that's pretty amazing. And I was concerned about my uh, my mid mount snorkel being potentially in the way, but it's not going to be in the way either. So this is pretty awesome. I'll probably come up maybe by the air cleaner and go up that way. We'll see. Once I raise it up, I'm going to go grab this ground wire. A lot of uh, a lot of firsts for me here on this Jeep. I'm thoroughly loving Jeep life and the community too. Pretty awesome community. Not a whole lot. I mean, there are some trolls out there. Not trolls, but but a whole lot of um, snobs, I guess, or people that you know. Hey, I'm better than you, or you know, whatever, but for the most part, the Jeeper community is absolutely fantastic, very friendly, very accepting, and really, I've seen it said many, many times, you know, you do with your Jeep whatever you want to do with your Jeep. I mean, it's your Jeep. If you want it to be a mall crawler, you know, who's, who's to judge you for wanting a mall crawler? Or... You know, if you want to build a, a crawling machine with a super high lift or whatever, I mean, who's, who's to judge you for what you want, right? And that's what I like about the community for the most part. That's what everyone says. Hey, you build your vehicle the way you want it, it's yours. And I really appreciate that. All right, so I got the, the nut off for the ground that I failed to remember about. Okay. So I was thinking I may have to pull this plate off um, because it's a recessed bolt where the ground wire goes, a recessed stud, is I'll just have to bend uh, this end at a little bit of an angle so it will fit in that recessed hole. I hope it's not stressing that connection enough to cause a stress fracture, but I don't see any other way to do this. Hey, that was beautiful. Heck yeah. That worked really nice. Okay, now I've got this little tiny ground wire that I'm also going to go ahead and stick on that stud. I'm going to do the same thing for it because it's kind of the same way. It's straight and we're trying to go into a recessed hole. I'm going to bend it 
just at a little bit of an angle. Look in here. Oh, shit, he's straight. Oh, he's moving. Watch your arm. Move it. If I can get this nut started, we'll be in good shape because then the, uh, the ratchet will force everything the rest of the way in. And it is started. Cool. Just ratchet this bad boy on there. It is a tight fit. It's a really tight fit between the grill and this stud slash nut that I'm having to use for this ground wire. There we go. Now I finally got it squeezed in there where I'm not rubbing on my grill. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this. However, there ain't no way a torque wrench is getting in between there. All right, now I'm going to run the ground right down the same way I ran the positive lead or the power lead. All right, cool. Um, let's raise it back up. So I did want to show one thing that I was doing um, when routing the wires under here. These wires were coiled up for a long time, so they have, um, you know, the memory of being coiled. And they tend to, when you're pushing them up from the bottom, they tend to want to just coil around stuff. So what I did, um, I, I like stuff neat. So, of course, I went ahead, grab that light. I went ahead and tie wrapped them together every, you know, few inches or so. And then on the end, I tie wrapped the two ends together so that instead of having this ground wire that was almost in a full circle looping around stuff, uh, it's less of a loop. And when I push it up from the bottom, it's not trying to wrap around everything that I'm trying to go around. So I just wanted to show you that a little, little tip there. All right, now I'm just going to push this up. Um, what I've done, I've come over the top of the sway bar. And then I'm going to go over the top of this um, part of the frame, the support bracket on the frame is my plan anyways. You really can't see. I really don't want to go under this support frame because I don't want anything that might snag these wires um, well, out on the trail or whatever. So I'm trying to keep it away from the fan, but also... Uh, ow, crap keep it away from the belt as well. So this is going to be a little tricky, y'all. Okay, yeah, I have a much better angle at it now, so I don't want it wrap around this lower radiator hose either. So I got to do a little bit of finagling and fishing here. Well, heck, you know what? I really don't want it under the radiator hose, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to run it just like it is. Up this way. There, okay. Now, I'm going to let it down, pull it a little bit from the top side, see if it'll uncoil itself. <coughs> Pull my wiring up. <clears throat> and again, it's gonna be it's gonna be a a bit of a challenge, I guess, to keep it. Well, no, it's not gonna be a challenge. Good. So it's going to be out of the way of the um, the belt. It's going to be out of the way of the cooling fan. And I'm going to see if I can route it. This, I see a little area between the battery box and the air cleaner box that would be the perfect size for this to fit here and it would help keep everything out of the way of everything else. So let's see if I can get this worked up through here. May not 
may not be able to. It's kind of a tight hole. Dang, it'd be pretty awesome if it would, though. So, a little persuasion. Let's see if I can persuade it to come on up. Make sure I'm not prying on the positive cable on the uh, battery. That would not be a good thing. I'm going to short this, short my Jeep out and be out of commission for a while. I was to do that. Because what the freaking heck is keeping this from coming up? Why? Why will you not come up? I think it's just the end of the cable is getting snagged under the air filter. There, you stubborn thing. There. There we go. That's what I was looking for right there, people. All right, I'm going to raise it back up. We'll uh, make sure my wires are routed properly underneath, and then we'll do our connections on the top side. See how this thing works. The remainder of this, I should be able to do off the lift. It's a little bit of a challenge for me to be on the floor and the vehicle up on a drive-on lift a little bit higher. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and back the Jeep off the lift. Got the Jeep off the lift now, a little easier for me to reach everything. Yeah, I know, I know. If I had a lift on the Jeep, it would be high anyways, but I don't, so there's that. All right, so we've got our, got our positive and our negative cables routed. I like where I have them routed. I'm gonna take my watch off and my ring off um, thankfully, I have been fortunate enough to never short out a watch or a ring on a battery positive post, but I have seen pictures of and have heard stories of this happening to others. One thing I did just think about is I am going to be constrained somewhat um, by the length of this cable. Oh, Mr. Grand, why are you going to go get tucked in here around the power steering fluid container and I'm happy with you being right there. That is no freaking problem whatsoever, but I'm gonna hook you up last. Now, power wire. Should I also wrap you around power steering? Yes, yes I should. Okay, all right, here we go, I got a plan. So this wire, this wire we're putting right here, flip it over, flip it, flip it good, there we go. I can't stress enough how important it is that you get these connections tight. There's going to be a ton of amperage. running through this switch and if you have any resistance at all it's going to cause heat heat will cause melting it could also cause a fire so you definitely want to make sure that you tighten the crap out of these things um, I'm not saying you know tighten it to the point of breaking something but you don't want to forget to tighten it and leave it loose because again, looseness causes resistance, resistance equals heat with the electricity, and we definitely don't want heat, because whenever this winch is operating, it's going to generate um, a lot of current flowing through there, and so you don't want, you don't want to melt your, 
don't want to melt anything. Okay, I like it sitting right there, y'all. I really like that. That's a great place for it. Um, my issue now is, will this cable reach? Sheesh, let's find out. Oh, crap. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have to swap terminals. Swap L locations. L locationo. I'm going to put this one here. Uh, just to make it a little bit closer for us on the flip side. And then what I should be able to do now, I hope, is run this wire. That way we don't have um, two openings, two holes. I just wanted to take one of these slots off um, so there's less, less potential for moisture, a.k.a. muddy water, to get in. I think it may have been easier with the ratchet than using that. But anyways, we're done. Okay, so now let's tuck this in here where I am hoping it's going to fit nice and neatly. Yeah, baby, right in between, right in between the uh, battery insulator blanket and the air filter is a perfect spot. The cable is beautifully, I mean, just the, the just long enough for it. So that was a, a good location. Making all the good choices today. And watch it, uh, watch it catch on fire and burn up about the time I crank it up after talking about all my good choices. All right. And yeah, I know I should disconnect the negative battery cable, but I've been doing this a long, long time. And as long as you're super, super careful, um, it really should not be any issue to do what I'm doing here, which is basically hooking everything up live. All right, got that tightened up. I really like that Jeep had the thought to put that extra terminal on there, and now the battery cover covers it up. It looks fairly, you know, factory looking. And now all I've got to do is put my ground on. Um, I've got the switch in the off position, so we're safe there. So no worries about uh, potentially shorting something out. Oh, good granny, really? Shoot, there we go. Do need to tighten that little 10 millimeter back up. There's a big old mega fuse right there. I hope, or is that a mega fuse? Or is, I guess that's a, a battery um, load sensor, I think is what that is. Actually, and I think that should about do it. Do you have D-rings ordered? For some reason, I guess it's like a lot of stuff these days. Really hard to find. Well, not hard to find, but um, Harbor Freight had them. I'm not that confident in Harbor Freight D-links. He 
probably looking at me like, man, have you ever operated a daggum cotter pin before? There we go. All right, here goes the test, everybody. Power on. I'm gonna put it in wireless mode. Wireless on. All right, everybody. Got the winch installed. Go ahead and drop the hood down. I'm gonna switch the power to the winch off. Drop my hood. And now, let's have a look. I like it a lot. Pretty freaking amazing.